Hello, my friends. Welcome back. I'm glad that you're here with me today. And we're going to start with a piece of scripture from the book of John. And we're going to read um, a passage that you probably have heard about before. It's very um, well known and a lot of people say that it's their favorite piece of scripture. And it goes like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. So we know that God's only son was Jesus, right? God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to be with us here on earth so we could know more about God's love. And it says, God so loved the world. Uh, you know, I'm wondering, how, how can we measure God's love? How do we know how much love God has for us? Well, I have three things here that help us to measure. I have this, a measuring cup. I have this, a watch. And I have this, a tape measure. So let's see. These three things I think might help us to know um, how we can measure God's love. All right, so let's think about if we're making some cookies. Um, you know, when you're baking, you have to use exact measurements. You have to use the right tools. When you're making a pie crust or baking cookies or baking a cake, you wanna measure things very carefully. So maybe if we're trying to measure God's love, we could use what? What would we use? if we're thinking about baking something and we want to compare it to measuring God's love. The measuring cup, right? Here it is. Well, let's see. If we take this cup and we pour some water into it. Yikes! Oh no! There's water all over the place. <laughs> that cup can't hold all the water that is in the measuring cup. And that's like God's love. We can't measure God's love with a measuring cup. There's just way too much of it. In a certain psalm in the Bible, Psalm 23, it says that God loves us so much he is, his goodness and his mercy and love so fill us up that our cups overflow. Just like the measuring cup when I was pouring the water into the glass, the glass was overflowing. Well, that's how much love God has for us. So much that it just overflows. All right, well, let's think about the next question is like if we're building something, what would we use to measure things? If we wanted to figure out how long something is, how wide, how deep, what would we use? Which one of those things? You're right. If we're gonna build something, we might use a tape measure. And, and this could help us know the size of the materials that we're using. Do you think a tape measure would help us know how much, how much God loves us? Well, in another psalm, it says, God's steadfast love is higher than the heavens. Imagine that. God's love for us is higher than the heavens. I would have to have an amazingly long tape measure to measure all the way to heaven. So the tape measure is not going to help us measure God's love because it reaches all the way up to heaven. So let me see, we have the watch left. This helps us measure time. Let's see, how long do you think God's love will last? Do you think we could measure that with our watch? Oh, let me check in my Bible. I think there's a Psalm that may help us with that as well. Let me find it here. It says, the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Hmm. 
everlasting, forever. That means it goes from time way, way back to time way, way in the future. And it's never going to stop. It's never going to stop in the future. It's going to keep on going. God's love is forever. So the watch is not going to help us measure how long God is going to love us. Because he loves us forever. Wow. Let me read the scripture again. And I want you to think about it with me for a minute. Oh, there's my bookmark. There we go. <laughs> my Bible got a little wet. <laughs> All right. So John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. As we go closer to the time of Easter, we're going to think about the story about what happened when Jesus went to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. We're going to read about some people who became very angry with Jesus. They were frightened of him, they were angry at him, and they decided that it was time for Jesus to die. This is the sad part of the story that comes before Easter. The, the part that might make us sad, it might make us afraid, because we think about the people that were so angry and so afraid of who Jesus was that they decided that they were going to crucify him, that they were going to end his life, and they did. They took him to trial, they thought about who he was and what he had said, and they decided that he could no longer be alive on the earth. So Jesus died um, on a cross. But then three days later, we hear the great news of the story of Easter about how Jesus rose from the dead and he overcame death. He was so strong and powerful and his love was so great that he overcame death and when he died, he took all of our sins with him. And we now have this wonderful promise that Jesus loves us and that God loves us and that we are going to live with him forever in heaven. We are going to have everlasting life. And the love that God has for us overflows we can't measure it because it goes all the way up to heaven and it's never going to end. We can't measure it with a watch because it's going to be from now until forever. So as we think about the things that lead up to the Easter morning story, we might be a little afraid. We might be angry at those people who took Jesus's life but we need, that to, we need to trust that God is going to be with us. And God was with Jesus through that whole time. And God gave Jesus his love just as he gives us his love and promised him that he would come through death and that he would live with God in heaven forever. That's such a wonderful promise. So thank you for listening to the story today. And remember that scripture that God loved the world and he gave his only son so that we could have eternal life. Would you say a prayer with me now, please? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us the gift of your son, Jesus, that he came here to earth, that he did suffer and he did die, but through your love, through his conquering of death, through his everlasting love of us, we are learning every day as we experience your love, how much you care for us. We thank you so much for this love that goes on forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for being here with me again today. I'll see you next time.